Good morning. Welcome to our devotional time together this morning. Being an evangelist in New Testament times could be dangerous. How was it for Paul? Today we're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. I'm using the New American Standard Bible this morning again. For you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain, but after we had already suffered and been mistreated in Philippi, as you know, we had the boldness in our God to speak to you the gospel of God amid much opposition. For our exhortation does not come from error or impurity or by way of deceit. So Christianity seemed to bother just about everyone whether it was the Jews who were outraged because Paul was preaching something that bothered them, or the Romans were unhappy because there was an uproar in their city, or the merchants were unhappy because their little idols they were making, people weren't buying them anymore because people were turning to believe in one God instead of many little gods. When the Bible gospel came, there was disruption. And so there was a lot of turmoil. And if you follow Paul, he's run out of a place, he's beaten up, he's left for dead, he's imprisoned, He's beaten with stripes. Uh, He's dragged out of the city. Sometimes he has to leave the city in a basket. I mean, all kinds of these things are happening. Uh, Where Paul went, there was fireworks, okay? There was uh, definite things going on. It wasn't an easy path. And Paul, you know, he could have stayed home and made tents all day long. That's what he could have done. But Paul is intent to give the gospel of Jesus into his world. And and he's he's just unstoppable. Not because he's unstoppable, but because he loves Jesus and and he's empowered, he's loving him and wants the Holy Spirit to to have his way in his life. If you look at the last part of Acts 16 and the first 15 or so verses of Acts 17, uh, you'll see what happened as Paul went out to Philippi and, and the very details of what happened there and how he kind of had to flee from there and he came to Thessalonica and, and the turmoil that rose there after in pretty short order uh, there was conflict because people were turning to the living God and turning to Jesus. So, yes, being an evangelist was, uh, was quite something in those days. When I think about this, you know, I, I wonder today if, if, if uh, risk management would cover Paul if he was going to preach somewhere. I'm not sure if they would uh, with the kind of turmoil that seemed to follow wherever he went. But we have to preach the gospel wherever we are. And God will bless us. God will protect us. And sometimes we'll get beat up. It happened to Paul again and again. And so that's okay. God knows what he's doing. God can recompense us whatever way seems good to him. In fact, when Paul left Thessalonica under pressure and the the, the mobs chasing him, he went to Berea and they actually, the Jews became, some of these Jews became so angry, they came down from Thessalonica to Berea and they chased him and raised up mobs there to attack him. And finally, Paul had to go back to Athens. And so, but he, he left a gospel truth behind him wherever he went. And God was with him. So the Thessalonians knew that Paul had endured a lot to bring them the gospel. And this this had a lot to do with his credibility. They knew he was all in. They knew he believed his message because he put his very life on the line to present it. Look out for those who are serving the Lord Jesus, who are teaching a solid Bible message. See what their experience is. And do what you can to give them your prayer support and you yourself be among their fellow evangelists wherever you are. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, being an evangelist was not easy in those days. It's been fairly easy in our days. I mean, it's always very much of a challenge to get people uh, awake enough to the truth of the gospel to actually turn and change their lifestyle. But Lord, your spirit is at work. We've seen it time and time and time and time again. Praise your name. Lord, help us, though, to be faithful. Help us not to be deterred by restrictions or arbitrary rules or the the great difficulties that there are today or the indifference of people. Of course, there will be indifferent people. Help us, Lord, to be uh, filled with your Spirit and to be guided by you. You'll lead us to those who are ready to turn. Their hearts are open. They're ready to turn to Jesus. Please, Lord, be with every single person in the hearing of my voice. Help us all to be your evangelists. We thank you for hearing this request, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's find how to share God's message with others. You know, it could be that if persecution slumbers, it could be that the fault is not in the message, but in the messengers. Have a wonderful day serving the Lord Jesus.